In the 1970s, my grandmother and grandfather moved into a two flat on the south side of Chicago. The entrance had a long stairway up to their residence. So basically, if you entered through the front door, you would have to walk up a stairway to reach their door. It provided extra security and my grandmother really appreciated it at the time. However, while moving in, she noticed small ashes in the form of a crucifix above the entrance door on the inside of the home. Now, knowing the previous renter was religious, she thought maybe it was a blessing to the home and figured she would just leave it there. The first few weeks went by fine. It was business as usual. Until maybe a month or so after moving in, at sporadic times in the night, they would hear somebody running up and down the stairs and eventually stop at the front door to their house. This would also frighten your dog Peanuts and he always began to bark when this would happen. The first time it happened, my grandfather actually went to the peephole to see if anybody was actually running up and down the stairs. But as he looked, all he could see was a narrow hallway lit by the moonlight. He eventually told my grandmother he was going to go see what it was and to call the police if he did not come back or yell for help. He opened the door and proceeded to walk down the stairs and saw nothing. The entrance was locked. The narrow hallway was empty. He opened the door, looked outside. Nothing. It was completely silent. Nobody was on the street, not even passing by cars. Yet they would hear it again and again. Someone running up and down the stairs. And eventually stop at the door. My grandfather would check a couple more times, but eventually he chalked it up to hearing someone next door as the houses were close. And again, he was not the type of person who believed in ghosts or the paranormal. My grandmother, on the other hand, believed it was something different, but my grandfather would say, that's not it, it's somebody next door. There's nothing as such as ghosts in this house. After my grandfather repeatedly refused to believe it was ghosts, my grandmother began to talk about the situation to her sister. Now her sister had her own share of experiences with the paranormal and actually became a paranormal fanatic because of it. She actually kept asking my grandmother to experience it with her, but my grandmother was always like, no. But one day she got her chance. My grandfather and his brother-in-law went out for a night. The kids were at a mutual friend's sleepover. My grandmother and her sister were alone in the home. Sure enough, in the middle of the night, they heard a sound of someone run up the stairs. The only difference this time is that they were actually in the living room and were awake talking on the couch. When they heard it, it startled both of them. The dog was barking and they actually happened to jump up on their couch from their sitting to look at the door. Only this time, as it was approaching up and down the stairs, my grandma and sister ran to the door and opened it right as it was approaching the door. When this happened, my grandma recalls having a cold breeze rush past her and go in the direction of where Peanuts was barking. She happened to turn towards Peanuts and noticed that its hair was raised very high and she believed that its eyes were glowing red. It began to growl and became very aggressive to the point where they couldn't even pet or command the dog. Somehow, they managed to get the dog to the balcony and close the balcony door. Not being able to reach my grandfather as cell phones weren't invented back then, they had no other choice but to call the police. The dog had become too aggressive for them to handle, and they were fearful for if somebody came home or even if, God forbid, the kids came home, the dog might attack them. So after calling the police and explaining the situation of the dog becoming aggressive, when they arrived, they gave my grandmother the unfortunate news that the dog possibly had some form of rabies and would have to be euthanized as there was nothing they could really do. My grandmother felt so guilty when the dog was actually euthanized that she had some sort of resentment towards her sister for a little bit due to the incident. After this happened, the running stopped. They never heard it again. My grandmother was so distraught and so were the kids over the loss of the dog that they decided to move once their lease was up. After the incident, my grandmother could never really finger point to the exact reason why it happened, why there was something running up and down the stairs. She tried reaching out to the previous renters, but they never got back to her. The owner really wouldn't talk to her about the situation, so she became hopeless. So that begs the question, what do you think really happened? Was it a spirit that went to the dog? Or did the dog have rabies like the police suggested? It's up to you to decide. <laughs>